In this video, I want to define what we mean by reducible and irreducible elements inside of an integral domain. So to get started, we're going to let D be an integral domain. And to make our lives easier, we're going to assume that the uh, multiplicative identity inside D is not equal to the zero inside D. And I want to let A be some non-zero element, and I also want A to not be a unit inside, mode, inside my domain. Uh, we're going to call A reducible inside our domain D, if and only if we can write a is equal to a product b times c, where both b and c are inside the domain, and these things are not units inside the domain. And since a is not 0, we also know that b and c are not going to be 0. In other words, we can write a as a product of two non-units. So A is a product of two non-zero non-units. Well, now that we have reducible defined, I want to define irreducible. And uh, we're going to say a is irreducible if A is not reducible inside our domain D. And I want to think about what that means. So A is irreducible means first of all A is not going to be the zero element. Second of all, A is not going to be a unit inside D. In other words, A is not part of U sub D. And the third thing is, is that if we have A written as B times C, then uh, what we've got to have is one of these two things, one of B and C has to not B, not a unit. And because A is not equal to zero, they can't be equal to zero. Well, not, not a unit means they are a unit. So this third property is that if A is written as a product, then either B is equal to a unit in D, or C is equal to a unit in D. In other words, when we say that A is irreducible and we have A is written as a product, that says either B is inside my set of units or C is inside my set of units. Well, I do want to briefly look at, and let's clean up one little, little bit of notation there. I do want to briefly look at a couple of examples inside of a not particularly comfortable ring for a lot of us. It, it always helps when you've got a new definition to look at a non-trivial example. So let's let our domain be the uh, ring of integers localized at, uh, let's say, 2. Now, this, of course, is the set of fractions that look like A over B, where we know that B has to be an odd integer. And we've looked at this ring in, in, the, in a previous video. Uh, what I want to do is I want to look at a couple of examples. Uh, 4 ninths clearly belongs to D. And uh, 4 ninths can be written as 2 thirds times 2 thirds. Uh, 
And um, neither one of these elements are units. I want to remember that from a previous video, the units inside this domain are the fractions that look like a over b, where both a and b are odd integers. So here is 4 ninths written as a product of two non-units. In other words, with this definition, it's easy to see that uh, 2 thirds is not one of our units in this particular ring. And so this is enough to say that 4 ninths is reducible. Let me erase that. Now I also want to have an example of an irreducible element inside this same ring. And the one that I'm going to actually look at is, let's just look at 2 thirds. 2 thirds is, reduci is irreducible inside uh, our domain, which is the localized ring of integers localized at um, 2. And I want to think about why is 2 thirds irreducible inside this domain? Well, uh, let's think about how we might write this as a fraction. So we can think about 2 thirds as being AC divided by BD. Well, that's going to basically tell me that AC is going to have to be equal to 2, and BD is going to have to be equal to 3. And that does not give me too many choices for how I can write this particular product here. Um, AC is equal to 2 is going to tell me that, um, that either A is equal to plus or minus 1, and C is equal to plus or minus 2, uh, or vice versa. So one of the pair is going to be plus or minus 1, and the other is going to be plus or minus 2. Um, BD being equal to 3 is going to tell me that uh, one of them is going to be plus or minus 1, and the other one is going to be plus or minus 3. Well, the upshot of this is, is that there are not very many lowest term fractions that we can use as this product. Uh, we can think about writing 2 thirds as one of the following uh, products. We can think about it as being, uh, we could have a 1 over a 3 paired with a 2 over a 1. We could have a 2 over a 3 paired with a 1 over a 2. Or we could have the negatives. And this actually exhausts all of the... Um, possibilities. And actually, I have a small mistake there. That should be a 1. And in each one of these four cases, uh, here is a unit. That's inside the set of units. This is inside a set of units, the set of units in my ring. Uh, this is, oops, not that one. This is inside my set of units, and this is inside my set of units. And so what we can figure out then is that uh, 2 thirds is indeed a unit inside our domain where the domain in question is the localized ring of integers localized at 2.